Hey, what's up everyone? My name is King Z and welcome back to King Z's Empire Season 2. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. My day is going pretty great so far. Now, last episode, we worked on enchanting a few tools, a few pieces of armor as well. As you can see, we got the boots here. They're looking pretty good so far. I just need some Feather Falling 4, which would be really appreciated. Some looting on my sword, some Sharpness 3. I need some efficiency on this axe. The picks are looking absolutely fantastic. I also got a pretty good looting 3 pick. If you haven't seen that episode, go check it out. I also need some efficiency on this shovel. Otherwise, Otherwise, we're looking pretty great as far as tools go. Now, as you can see, I do have the enchanting things in my inventory here. And that is because today was supposed to be about building an enchanting area. I asked you guys for your suggestions down in the comments section of last episode. What should our enchanting area look like this season? Last season, it was nothing special. It was just packed away in my very first storage area. And I never really did anything with it. But this season, thanks to a few suggestions from a few of the Afterlife members, I'm going to be making a pretty magical enchanting area for this world. Now, it is a very ambitious build for the start of this series, but seeing as we have enchanted tools, it shouldn't be too crazy of a build. Before we start that build, though, I want to move the cows and the sheep. I want to move them down here. I want to work on the pathway a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer, make it a little bit easier to traverse up and down with some slabs and some stairs and things like that. And then one other thing we need to do before we start working on the enchanting area, which, by the way, will not be done for quite a while. It's going to take a few episodes at least to get this thing done. We need to find some moss and we need to find some glow berries because those are some of the things that I want to use in this build. But before we head out and do all those things, let's talk about this build a little bit. So some of the comments I got from the Afterlife members, Ash's idea was something along the lines of a, a dug in a mountainside kind of cave-like enchanting area, which I like a lot. I love that idea. GP's idea was that we build some kind of floating island being held down by chains or an enchanting tower, which I love the floating island island's idea. I'm not so sure about the chain idea just because I think it's a little bit, I think I'd have to build a pretty big build, a pretty big island to make it be held down by a chain. But then there's also our Torvian's idea that we use an ancient ruins, Stonehenge type enchanting area build. And I thought, why not blend them all together and make something pretty fantastic. So right here is gonna be the entrance of the cave that leads to our enchanting area. It's gonna go quite a ways underground and it's gonna be off in this direction. And it's gonna be very, very large and very open. And hopefully you guys are getting a little bit of an idea of what I'm planning to build, but we're gonna do some floating islands underground inside of a massive cave ruin from ancient times in this world. Now, like I said, it's gonna be a pretty big undertaking for this series right at the start. I think we're only on episode five right now. So this project is probably gonna span at least a few episodes, if not, you know, five or 10. I'm not totally sure how long it's going to take us because I don't want to fit it all in one episode. I think that'd be kind of ridiculous and it slowed down my content creation for you guys quite a bit. So we're going to do a few other things along the way, build a few other small things along the way, but all the while I'm going to be creating this pathway, this tunnel into this huge cavern that we're going to have underneath this area over here that is going to be our enchanting area. So while I get to planning that, enjoy this little montage of me doing a little bit of animal moving and hopefully a little bit of resource gathering.
Okay, so that was a much longer trip than I thought it was gonna be. I had no clue. So this is basically like the perfect seed, the perfect starting area, right? We've got spruce, we've got birch, we've got oak, we've got a savanna off in the distance, we've got a jungle off in the distance, we've got dark oak off in the distance. And I was like, you know what? It probably won't be too hard to find either a shipwreck with some moss, which would have been really all I would have needed, but I really wanted some of the glowberries and some of the other things that you can find in the lush cave, which I didn't get absolutely everything. I didn't find the little the little tall leafy things. I don't know what they're called, but we just went on an absolute mission. Let's check out the map here. So this is where we are. I went off in this general direction, passed through this little mountain pass here, went down here. This is where I left my little boat area, went around this nice little, little island here. I went off. There's a uh, ruined portal down there that you guys didn't see. There's a few of them in the water that you guys didn't get a chance to see. Also, there's a shipwreck somewhere over here. Another ruined portal, and there's a shipwreck I found where we found just one thing that I wanted to take, which was a buried treasure. Went off in this direction over here. There's a village over there. Right, let's zoom out a little bit, actually, so you guys can see. Went off in this direction. I didn't even see this one over here. This is kind of nice with the map. Over this way, there's a huge plains biome over here. I believe we stopped at this one. There is a woodland mansion here, which we'll talk about in a second. Like I said, this is like one of the most perfect seeds I've ever had. Woodland mansion, very, very close to our build, which is... Where's the tiny little thing? There it is, right here. But if we come up here, I went off in this direction, kept coming over here, and we had to go all the way to this mega taiga over here. And I think the tree is somewhere around around here. Not totally 100% sure. But then I had to make the trek back. Trek back was terrible. But look at this. We also have a woodland mansion right here, which is absolutely nuts. And I don't really find this cheaty for this world, um, being able to see some of those things, especially since they're so close. I found this one earlier. I just didn't want to talk about it because I do not want to go in there anytime soon. I think we've died enough in this series so far. And there's also another little, little guy there. But there's a fairly easy way to spot some of these azalea trees. I think there's one up here that I saw after I'd already collected most of the rooted dirt. So there's another azalea tree there. But I see scoured this map looking for another color like that. See, there's another one I think right there, but over here in this area, there is not one for miles. If you guys see one in here, please let me know. There's a few things I missed. Like I said, I would really love to get them. I'm also going to drop the seed for you guys because I'm not really worried about you guys spoiling anything for me. Honestly, I've done it all before. Um, it's kind of cool to do that in the world like the first time and figure things out. But as long as you guys aren't like sharing coordinates with me, I'm still going to experience it and I can usually just ignore things pretty easily. So it's not a big deal, but there's absolutely no azalea trees over here which is kind of crazy like that kind of looks like one but i walked right by it like those those two both look like it. i think that's just a biome change yeah because the biome change right there between those trees but not a single azalea tree or hundreds of thousands of blocks except for over there which is crazy but we got some goodies let's check them out real quick a bunch of rooted dirt i really want to use this in the pathways here Let's see i can just kind of get rid of this but i think this will look pretty good in our pathway because we have the jungle wood i think it might look pretty good if not i can just use it underneath the uh the cliff faces here and use the the roots that I have. I got to figure out how to get more of the roots. You can see them in here. These little guys, the roots in here. I don't know how to get them, but I need to figure out how to get them. Also found some deep slate down there. The reason it didn't show me going into the lush cave is because it was mainly just me digging up all this dirt forever, stumbling upon like a little side cave with a bunch of clay, these four diamonds in there. And then there was literally no moss or anything down there. So I had to like break down some walls and like do a bunch of searching. So it was really like a tedious task, but I eventually found what I was looking for, which was the moss, these spore blossoms, which are really neat for the enchanting build that we're going to do. And some azalea bushes that we got from the tree that we cut down and also some glowberries, which I really wanted. Like I said, the buried treasure from that sunken ship was really nice. Found a ton of pumpkins that we're going to be using to trade with our buddy over there, which we're going to name, by the way. But before we went on that awesome, super long mission to find one of the only azalea trees in this seed, we moved our cows, we moved our sheep, and we did some work on the pathway. And I absolutely love this little pathway, this little windy pathway coming down here. I actually really wasn't liking it with just a text down here but as soon as i added the foliage some of the fences and stuff like that it started looking a heck of a lot better so just goes to show you if you're not liking something just keep working on it keep detailing it it'll eventually look pretty good i think i like it right now obviously i still gotta do some detail work on these cliff faces and stuff like that but i figure we could do that sometime this episode as well i'm probably gonna do a stream and get some of that work done it doesn't really need to be on camera you guys can kind of just see the finished product and be happy with it i think uh, but this is our cave that we need to start working on but before we do that let's go over here i've been trading with this guy for quite a while and before i forget let's bring him some pumpkins as well i mean I hope he's still around. A lot of these villages over here have kind of like wandered off in that direction. So I don't know if they've despawned yet or not. I hope not. I really hope this villager has not because I've been trading. Yeah, he's still there. But see those villagers off in the distance? Look at them. They keep running up the mountainside. I don't know if they're gonna if they're gonna die or not. But this guy right here, you can see he's already got the gold little thing right there because we've been trading with him so much. Got a few of these trades unlocked. Uh, but he loves pumpkins. He really loves him some pumpkins, and I really love trading pumpkins with him. Oh, he's like he's all bought up now. Let's see if he upgraded. There he goes. Emerald now already. Can you now? 
trade some more pumpkins? No, you don't want pumpkins anymore. So carrots, beetroots, what else have you got now? Oh, suspicious stew. It's kind of a lame trade, <laughs> uh, but he does sell pumpkins, which is really nice as well. So I can go ahead and gather a few pumpkins and maybe I gotta do one more trade maybe. I'm just waiting for his little XP bar to go up. One more, there we go. Oh, are you an expert now? You're gonna be diamond? Diamond, no. One more? Yeah, that's it. Maybe one more even. We'll wait, wanna wait and see. Yeah, there we go. Is he a diamond now? <gasps> Look at that. What do you got now? <gasps> Ooh, golden carrots. Holy cow, I didn't know you could actually, I need to really work with villagers because that's like a super easy trade to do and watch. He's gonna give me more emeralds now and it was still burnt out. Oh no, it's not. Yeah, give me emeralds. Give me golden carrots. Yeah, we're gonna name this guy. So there has been a commenter, a subscriber that is fairly new to the channel. I mean, this channel is still not really that old. It's only been a few years since I've been doing this, but he comments every single video, especially on this series. And I really do appreciate it. So this guy is gonna be named Twiglet after Twiglet MC, who's also a Minecraft content creator. So if you guys wanna check him out, go ahead and do so. But thank you Twiglet for always commenting on my videos. You are now part of the world. Once I get a name tag, I'll go ahead and name him, but he's already locked in with the trades. <laughs> I really need to hopefully keep him safe though. Now that he's got that name, I don't want Twiglet to die, but that's something I wanna do in this world as well. For some of you loyal subscribers that are always commenting, always liking, sharing, whatever, I wanna add you guys in the world, whether it be a dog, a cat, a donkey, a horse, a villager, a companion in the world. And if you want your name in there, let me know. And if you're a a loyal subscriber and I see you all the time, it's going to be real easy for me to just grab a name tag, name you. I might not always show it on camera, but if you are a Minecraft YouTuber or a content creator that I do watch from time to time, I might give you a shout out as well, just because I appreciate the views. I appreciate the comments and my channel is not the biggest by any means, but every little shout out counts and every subscriber counts. So thank you guys for watching all these videos. If you do, I really do appreciate that. But now it is time for a little bit of off camera work. And when we come back, hopefully some of this cliff side will be a little bit more detailed. I want to work on the farms a little bit and I'm also going to start the cave. And for those of you guys that stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to be showing off what I have in the creative world to show you what this thing is going to eventually look like. It's just the base form right now. So it's kind of just blocked in as far as like the shape and how large it's going to be, but you'll at least get a sense of what we're trying to do here. So I'm going to go stream and I'll be back with you guys in just a few. All right, everyone, we have a much better looking cliff face and I still think it needs a little bit of work. It's not totally done, but it's looking a heck of a lot better. And if you guys remember from like the first episode when we built our first little cliff face up there, I said I wanted some jungle wood and I still think I might want to add a little bit of jungle wood in there possibly. But another shout out for you guys, Ash's Den, who I play on the Afterlife server with, suggested using granite for the dirt on the cliff side. And it really does go pretty well. And I've also added some of the rooted dirt and some of the roots. I think that's why I want to add some of the jungle because the roots are a little bit too bright for me. They don't really fit in all that well. I think either maybe we'll use some spruce fence as some roots or something like that. Or if I can get some of the jungle wood mixed in there to make it look a little bit better, then we'll do that. But for right now, it's looking pretty good. And I've also been working on the pathway around here. As you can see, it's moved all the way down here now. I think we might be able to fit something over here eventually. I've got this like little railing going pretty much everywhere, but that can be moved and taken away if we need it to be. But I've also changed up some of the spruce wood up here, as you can see, all granite now. It's looking really nice. It doesn't blend all that well, like when you're right up close to it. Like here, it looks pretty good, but if you're like right up next to it, it doesn't look that great. But when you're pretty far away, like you can't even tell the difference. Like it, it blends really well with the dirt. I'm really happy about that. I still need to texture the stone right here. It's pretty flat. And then I want to add some of the rooted dirt in here as well, just to kind of make it look a little bit better. And then I've also added some of the coarse dirt on the top. I think adding some of the coarse dirt in there as well might help it out a little bit, just to give it a little bit of darker texture as well. But so far it's coming along pretty good. And now let's head over here because I have been working on the tunnel to the enchanting area. And then we'll go take a look at what I've got planned in the creative world. But this is the first part of the plans. This is so I can line up my light Matica schematic just to make it a little bit easier. I'm not going to mess up, uh, but you can see I, I have this little archway here for the entrance. I'm going to detail it out later along with all of this. It's going to be detailed with like mossy cobble, mossy stone, all that good stuff. But this is how we enter into what is going to be the enchanting area. So if we come down here, it gets more narrow and more narrow. And finally, it's just a one block wide. And then we come into here and I'm not sure if I want to add maybe like one or hope maybe two more of these like little parkour things before we get to the end. But you can just have like a little parkour jump to this other side. I'll probably dig that quite a bit further down just so it makes it look nice and eerie and drops off quite a bit. And then if we head down here, it gets a little bit smaller. I think right here I can do like maybe a two wide pathway going down here, but just a sheer drop off into the abyss. So I think it would be kind of cool. And then it 
it opens up somewhere around here. Let's go ahead and take a look in the creative world and see how this is going to eventually turn out. All right, so here we are in the creative world. You can see I actually just grabbed the schematic from my single player world and brought it in here. So I deleted this whole chunk area here and just placed what we had from the survival world into the creative world just to give me a better idea of what I was working with. And then this is the exact same cave here, as you can see, and we'll head down here. Same exact thing going on. It's a little bit more narrow, more narrow, and it kind of closes off. As you can see, without the torches down there, it's actually a little bit more eerie, but I want to make it even more scary a business down there. And then, like I said, none of this is actually detailed. It's got like the, the basic shape in here. I'll go back through with stairs, slabs, textures, and stuff like that. A lot of dripstone I think I want to use in here. Again, I'll probably like figure out what I'm going to do with like a drop off down here. I might even just do that in the survival world. It'd be a little bit easier, but as you can see, it's going to open up into this crazy huge area and you can see our enchanting area over there. But I'm going to have some kind of like a little parkour thing going on right here, which I think will be pretty cool. There are some little laggy chunks around here though, which kind of make it difficult to do some of the parkour. So I might change these up depending on the survival world. Cause you can see there's the chunk again. It kind of just drops me off when I Right there. I think it's right there. But there'll be only one way to get over here. And then we will have, I might dig it out further down. Right now I got some lights down there so you can kind of see it's not too scary, but you can see just how big of a project this is going to be. I still have yet to do the ceiling in most places. Just kind of got like the basic shape. Down here, I'm not sure if I want the water or not. I might just make it, you know, a rock solid endless abyss or maybe um, some stalagmites coming up. I definitely want some stalactites hanging down. Um, and then over here, this is where like the ruined theme comes in. We're going to have some pillars going up on these like old ancient stonehenge type things here we'll probably have a few here here and here possibly and then we have the enchanting table down below and also i realize it's probably going to be a super tedious task to get in here we just want to quick enchant something it's a really cool thing to show off in the world and you know show what we've built but i'll also have a quick entrance so like if i i die and lose all my tools and i want to get in and out real quick we'll have a quick access from over here which is quite a ways away from the starter house you can see it over there but i'm gonna have like another little stone hen type deal here looking old and ancient that nobody really touches um, just alongside the mountainside and we'll probably have like a path above it maybe a path below it or something like that but it'll just be something that no one really messes with or we could even have it like buried underneath a build or something like that would be kind of cool but that's what I've been working on and that's kind of why this episode is going to be out late for you guys it's taken quite a while to do that in creative and I can only imagine how long it's going to take us in our survival world speaking of our survival world let's head back over there real quick all right and now we're back and you can see we're in our nice lit up area that it looks way further down in the creative world without the torches. It's kind of cool. It's good to know. But that's what I've been working on this episode. And I know I got a lot left to do. I'm definitely going to need a beacon to get all that huge cavern dug out. And like I said, it's kind of like a, a basic build idea, basic plan anyways, as far as like what it looks like. I might add stuff. I'm definitely going to add a lot of texture and foliage and things like that. That's why we've got the moss and all that stuff. But if I can bring to life what I have in my mind, then it's going to be pretty awesome. But anyways, guys, I think that's going to wrap up the episode. We got quite a bit of work done at least on the pathways and the cliff sides and planning out what we're going to eventually do in this world hopefully you guys are looking forward to that i know i am but leave me some comments let me know what you guys want to see in the next episode i'll probably be doing like a poll or something like that to see what we think we should be working on next episode i'll probably work on the enchanting cavern digging out project either on streams or off camera just to make it a little bit easier for you guys i'll give you guys updates periodically through the series and we'll do like a big grand finale of what it looks like whenever we get it done. But yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up. Remember, if you're brand new or haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. It really does help my channel grow and I really do appreciate it. Remember to leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think of the series, let me know what you think of the episode, and I'll see you all next time here in Kingsley's Empire.